Meanwhile, in Artisan Castle, sleeping dragons lie around the floors of the hallways as Dr. Shemp exits a nearby room. Not in there, either. I don't get it. It can't be that hard to find that old lizard. And it stands out too much. There aren't really that many places to hide in a castle like this. Honestly, where is the decorative decor? It's all plain and boring. <sighs> Guess I'll have to roam their connective dreams to find Aster's dream. Alrighty then, let's get it started in here. Dr. Shemp then casts a new spell, one which its purple light illuminates the hallway. Back in the realm of dreams, Ember's expression can only be described as shock and awe, finding what she sees in front of her as unbelievable. Impossible. This has to be a dream. Tis more than a dream, Ember. Here we can live in peace with our ancestors. So, I am dreaming? Yes, but it need not be temporary. What do you mean? You must surrender to death. Ember's expression turns from one of awe to one of surprise. What? Only spirits can permanently exist within the realm of dreams. However, death itself is not enough. Once the physical body is discarded, the spirit must be willing to accept this world and forever become a part of it. The Nork Wars may have taken me, but death is not something to be feared, but a blessing. In this world, we have eternal bliss. Endless happiness, it's all laid out for you. All you need to do is accept the eternal slumber, and you can finally be with your family. As Ember seems to smile at the revelation of her mother's words, her expression turns to one of worry, something that confuses Ember's mother. Hmm? Why do you hesitate, daughter? Do you not want to be with your mother again? Has your love for me waned? No! Of course not. But what about my friends and Granny? Hmm? What friends? You mean the purple and red dragon? Mother, their names are Spyro and Flame. Ah, yes. The show-off red dragon and the purple dragon with no family to speak of. Now wait a minute, Mother. That's not very nice. Spyro has family. Family? You mean a family of insects? I'd hardly call that a family. Why are you speaking of them like that? They're my friends. The only friends you need are your family. Do you even understand what I gave up to have you in my life? What do you mean? Ember's mother then uses magic to show her an image of her and what appears to be e. Ember's father, who turns up, uh, who is covered by a green magical silhouette. Who's that glowing green dragon? I can't make him out. That is a side effect of the realm of dreams, for you cannot perceive an image here of someone you've never met. So I decided to give his silhouette some color. This is your father. Ember's expression turns from one of curiosity to shock. Oh yeah. Granny told me that my father was a green dragon. Other than my mother. Our relatives shunned me for falling in love with a green dragon, and that wasn't the worst of what they perceived. You more than anyone, of course, know how the dragon community feels about hybrids. Ember looks down in sadness. I do. I remember when I was attacked because of a rumor. But I and Granny were the only ones who knew the truth. At least until someone caught wind of what you truly were. The Elders were the only ones tolerant enough to give dragons who love outside their own element homes away from the public eye. They called it a way to keep us safe from prejudice, when in reality it was only a way to keep us locked away where no one had to bear what they saw as fatalism made into reality, a fabled prophecy of doom made manifest. I thought we could never escape that reality, until I died in the Nork Wars and made it to the realm of dreams. Spyro and Flame may seem like friends now, but they will turn their backs on you the moment they know the truth. And as for my mother, she feels nothing but shame toward what I had done, what you represent. She, however, ne 
would never show it out of respect for me. I am her daughter, after all. These words bring Ember to tears, leading her to cry. Ember then wipes the tears off her face. Now do you see why you must stay? Ember's mother re then reaches out her paw. Stay, my love, and we can be together. We can find your father and live as a true family. Mama. As Ember begins to walk forward, the glowing orbs attempt to stop her by blocking her path. Hey, not you guys again, huh? <sighs> Just then, Ember begins to hear phantom voices coming from the orbs. Are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> Enough! With a swift flap of her wings, the wind current blows away the glowing orbs and knocks them against a castle wall. No, oh, no! Ember runs toward the nearest orb, checking if it's okay. Mother, why would you do that? We are descended from the most powerful bloodline in dragon history. We as pink dragons are descended destined for greatness. As such, there will always be those who resent and will block our path. We cannot uh, take such threats lightly, no matter what form they come in. Tell me, are you certain these friends won't be as such? I... Suddenly, Ember shows a surprised expression as the glowing orb fades through Ember's body, fading away afterwards. Wait a minute. What am I... I... remember something. Ember then has a flashback of when she was a little dragon and attacked by a trio of, of, bull, of y young bully red dragons who were hurling fireballs at her while she hides behind a large stone to protect herself. Stupid half-breed! We, we heard the rumors! Come on out! Yeah, or we'll roast ya! Please, leave me alone! It's not true! As if! We've heard the rumors! We don't want dragons like you mucking up our kingdom! The red dragons continue hurling fireballs, much to Ember's fear. Suddenly, the last fireball caused the rock to explode and push back Ember. Ember then looks back at, as the three red dragons look down at her, ready to attack her. I'll show you what happens when you walk under into our town. As the leading red dragon inhales to breathe flames, a rock is thrown at him from an unknown source. Ow! What the? Just then, a young dragon appears and pushes them by hitting them with a tail swipe in midair. Back off! Yo, Ember! You okay? Just then, a young flame runs up to Ember, helping her up. Flame, you found me. We saw those dragons chasing you and followed. We? What's the deal? Yeah, who are you? Just then, Ember looks on to see a young Spyro for the first time in her life. My deal? What's your deal? Attacking her in the first place? Didn't you hear the rumors? She's a half-breed, a hybrid. Element, it's combining don't belong here. So what? She's still a dragon just like us. Look at me. I'm a purple dragon, the only one of my kind. That doesn't mean you have to be jerks. I may be alone, but at least I know who I am. So don't go acting like you know who she is when you don't even know her. The only ones who can decide who we are is us! These words resonate with Ember, making her look at Spyro in awe, sparking the romantic feelings she would feel for Spyro from then on out. It doesn't matter how you're born. What matters? Back in the present, Ember opens her eyes. Is who you choose to be. What was that, my daughter? Please speak plainly. We must make haste if we are to seek out your father's spirit. There's no need. Huh? Ember's mother's expression turns to one of confusion. I'm sorry, mother, but you're wrong. I just remembered something I forgot. The reason Flay's my best friend 
And the reason Spyro means as much as he does to me. The same as Papa meant to you. <gasps> Ember's mother's expression turns from one of confusion to one of shock. Which is why I decided I'm going back to change things as best as I can for all hybrid dragons. I know who I am now. And I don't need this necklace to prove that. But I thank you for it. And I'll cherish it forever. A tear falls down Ember's left eye. Goodbye, Mama. Ember turns around to leave, but the air around her suddenly goes silent. Why? Why would you want to return to a reality with a cursed future? Suddenly, Ember's mother transforms into a shape of pure yellow light energy, showing off a pair of giant wings and glowing eyes. Ember then readies herself for battle, realizing that what she stands before is not her mother. Who are you? Really? Even I'm smart enough to know that my mother would never have looked down on other dragons like that, no matter what her bloodline was. Why would you want to leave this paradise? Don't you understand? The real world is cruel and unforgiving. You were born in fire and brimstone, and you would still wish to live in the same world? What would compel you to deny such tranquility and peace? What would compel you to be so ungrateful? That's simple. Because it wouldn't be real. The entity expre his expression shows surprise at Ember's words. It doesn't matter what this realm gives me. It's not real. No matter how much I want my mother back, I know that it's not really her. And on top of that, my friends, my real friends, they're not here. I don't care how cruel the world outside is. I'm willing to face it if it means I can face it alongside them. Especially Spyro. He saved me that day. The day I was attacked by those bullies. He inspired me that day to grow stronger. As strong as my mother. And I won't repay him by leaving everyone behind. And what if your mother... Did she not leave you behind to fight a war that she made no difference in? She could have stayed with you, but she decided to abandon you for dragons she owed nothing to. You're wrong. Every dragon made a difference. I know they did. Especially my mother. She was a kind soul who fought for the weak. So even if another war were to come, I'll stand tall just as she did. How dare you! As the entity charges at Ember, she prepares to risk her life. Spyro. Lame. I'm sorry I won't make it back. Suddenly, the gem in Ember's necklace begins to glow a bright pink light. What? That light? It can't be! The glowing floating orbs around them begin to glow pink and transform into pink dragon shapes of energy. Pink dragons? Impossible! As Ember opens her eyes, she witnesses the spectacular sight, looking around at the dragon-shaped pink energies. These are... my ancestors, aren't they? Is this my power? Like Flame has? No. It's my pendant. No. I won't let you. Now, my daughter. Ember's eyes widen in response to this voice. Our ancestors are with you. Unleash your flame. Ember then releases her flames, only to notice that they are pink flames that are pushing back at her enemy. Something she's never been able to do before. Incredible. So this is... The spirit flame. Just then, the entity unleashes a great light that engulfs the entire area. Meanwhile, Dr. Shemp floats around the realm of dreams, searching for Aster. Shemp then approaches a door. Hello? Dr. Shemp then sees an embarrassing sight of Aster with muscles posing for Mrs. Shoutfire. Oh my, Asta, you hunk of a dragon. Is this Asta's dream of hers? The image of Aster then disappears. Oh, hers. Dr. Shemp then closes the door. This is gonna be a long day. I thought it'd be easier to find Aster in the realm of dreams, but it's like finding a needle in a haystack. No way he knew I was coming. If he 
he's not in the dream side. Then maybe it's time to check the nightmares. <laughs> oh boy, I wonder who's getting tortured tonight. Dr. Shemp then teleports away using dark magic. Meanwhile, as the light of the entity dims, Ember looks up, seeing a giant orb of pure yellow light. Well done, Ember. You've completed your test. Test? The test needed to help you escape this realm. I don't understand. There will be time to explain later. For now, an interloper has invaded the realm of dreams, and he's put your friends in danger. You mean Spyro, Sparks, and Flame? They're here? Yes, but you must hurry. The entity then opens a portal leading into Spyro's dream. Spyro! Ember then enters the portal, with Spyro noticing her in response. Ember! You're here! Better late than never. You wouldn't believe what I've been through. Let me guess. You found out you're in a dream world too, right? Yep. Only it wasn't this dark. I'm also guessing you ran into some kind of big black monster with wings named Blackout. Actually, I ran into a yellow monster with wings. Made of light. Okay. Aside from that weird note, the monster I met told me this is a memory, not a dream. Wait a minute. This dome kind of looks like the inside of an egg. A purple egg? My egg! This must have been on the same day I hatched! The two then suddenly hear what sounds like a battle outside of the egg. A battle? It must have been on the same day! The year of the dragon! Spyro! This might be a clue to finding out where you came from! If we came from the same nesting grounds, then we might be able to find out what happened to your parents! Really? <laughs> Alright! About time you figured that one out. Although I don't know if it counts as cheating since you did have some help. Come on, brother. Just let them have this one. Spyro and Ember look on as the Entity of Light and Blackout appears next to each other. As they both walk up to Spyro and Ember, they both take the forms of unique dragons. Dragons? In a place like this? In a sense, we're dragons, and in another we're not. We weren't properly introduced. You may call me Spotlight, and my brother here is Blackout. We're primordial dragons born of this realm, and are tasked with being its guardians. I protect the side of light and happiness in this realm, the place where dreams are reality. And I protect the side of darkness and fear, the place where nightmares are materialized. It's a struggling balance that must be maintained in order to, for sleep and spirits to prosper. We ensure that no one wanders into this realm by outside forces, which you and dragons of your kingdom have. So we're not the only ones? Nope. An interloper entered this realm uninvited recently using forbidden magic. He calls himself Dr. Shemp. Looking into this one's dreams is like reading one's mind. Him being in this realm has left his mind vulnerable to telepathic invasion. So we, we pretty much almost know everything about him. I've heard of Dr. Shemp. He's a Nork shaman who was exiled by the first Nork commander. They saw relying on magic as weakness. Guess Nasty Nork didn't get the memo. So if we find him and kick him out, we can wake everyone up. We, he can, but his presence is keeping our tails tied. We will be unable to, to aid you. Even with it, it, his magic's similar to mine, so it's hard to counter, even with my sister here. First, we'll send you to find your friends Flame and Sparks. And then we'll send the three of you to deal with Shemp. Spotlight then opens a portal that shows Flame in a nightmare. One where Flame is surrounded by fire and smashed eggs. Flame is curled up in sorrow, similarly to how Ember was earlier today. Where are you? Mom? Dad? Ember and Spyro look at Flame in sadness. Flame, you're the same as me. What do you mean, Ember? Flame was born on that same day, just like me. This is the same nesting ground I woke up in. Flame never told anyone. Not even me and you, Spyro. 
I can't imagine what keeping that inside is like. But I know his pain. Flame then wakes up, noticing Spyro and Ember. <sighs> no, Ember. You don't know my pain. When you woke up, your mother and grandmother were right there for you. My parents, they were gone before I was even hatched. I had to wander the endless flames until Lindar found me. Every time I close my eyes, all I see are flames. Flames are who I am, but they're also a scar left by the monsters who took my parents from me. I'm sorry, guys. I try to keep up that cool and mellow act, but it's just for show. I'm scared of being alone again. But you're not alone, pal. That's right. We're here. Together. Ember then extends her paw, helping Flame up, who then smiles at remembering that he's not truly alone. Suddenly, Dr. Shep wanders into Flame's nightmare, floating in midair and noticing his surroundings. Look, another nightmare. Might as well... Uh... uh. Dr. Shemp then notices Spyro and friends. Uh, who's that? The guy that brought us here. He's the bad guy. Am I the only one finding this moment awkward? I expect that from Sparks. Son of a butterfly! We have to catch him! Spyro and friends then begin to fly after Dr. Shemp. He's about to get flamed! That gets old real fast! As the trio chases Shemp, they fly through a plethora of dreams and nightmares, until they end up in Sparks' dream, where he's surrounded by dragonfly ladies, getting a shoulder massage by one of them, and being fed grapes by another. Ladies, don't be afraid to bask in my glory. Did you know I've eaten 10 billion butterflies? Suddenly, the trio chasing Shemp are passing by Sparks, leading Spyro to notice him and grab him immediately. Let's go! No, no, wait! I love it here! Ladies, call me! After a lengthy chase, Shemp decides to stop flying away. All right, I've had enough of you little dragons jetting in the way of the North Empire. You may have figured out my plan to learn where Aster hit in the shard, but I ain't going without a fight. Uh, actually, we didn't know anything about that. You didn't? Nope. Oh, well, I blame you for making me slip. Dr. Shemp then uses his dark magic to attack the trio, leading them to try and dodge his attacks as best as they can. I know what the at shard really was, and I'll do whatever I can to get it back. Then I'll be running the show instead of that hack, nasty Nork. So it's just a hostile takeover then? Well, at least we don't have to deal with that mean old nasty Nork. When, I, when I'm done with the Nork Empire, nasty will be a fleeting memory. As Dr. Shem continues to shoot beams of dark magic at the group, he notices Ember's necklace after getting a clear view of it. It can't be. Well, by the powers that be, it appears I've found the next best thing. Dr. Shem then uses his dark magic to separate eight Spyro and friends, using a materialized hand to grab Ember, who struggles to get free. Dr. Shem then uses his magic to bind Spyro and Flame to floating debris. Ember! No way! Hey, what am I, chopped liver? Sparks is then immediately bound to a small piece of debris. Thank you. Sparks! Oh, my bad. Let me go! Something tells me you didn't understand what it was around your neck, little dragon. <laughs> Dr. Shemp then removes Ember's pendant from her neck. What are you talking about? To think. Another spirit gem right under your nose. Spyro and friends are shocked by this revelation. A spirit gem? Like the one Spyro broke? Spyro did what now? Oh no. Finally, for once I'm not the blabbermouth. Doc Dr. Shemp, while still holding Ember, floats down to Spyro. Well, well, well. So the ancient dragons called out to you, did they? Well, it doesn't matter. Only more spirits for the taking. What do you plan to do with it? What else? Domination over the Nork Empire, and then domination over the Six Kingdoms, and domination over everything else! I don't plan on explaining everything, it's just boring! So why spoil the surprise? 
<laughs> the first thing I will do, though, is squeeze the life out of every single one of you. Starting with you, little pink missy. Dr. Shemp then begins to crush Ember in his materialized hand due to his dark magic. No! Ember! So long, little pink dragon! As Ember struggles, her pendant in Shemp's hand begins to glow. Unhand my daughter! What? Spyro, Flame, Sparks, and even Dr. Shemp begin to notice the pink light. What the? What's that? This light! This magic! It can't be! Just then, multitudes of pink energy in the shape of dragons emerge from the pendant, latching onto Shemp as best they can. Pink dragon spirits? Impossible! They can't act outside the gem! In the realm of dreams, Ember then looks in awe, realizing that her mother is actually here. Mother? The only limit is one's imagination. After hearing these words, Ember realizes something. That's it! What are you yapping about, dragon? This is the realm of dreams, where what we think becomes reality. That's why you're so powerful here. With a thought, Ember imagined it's a pink, draconic avatar or of energy being unleashed from her body, freeing herself. Oh my convexity! It's p as the pink dragon of this generation, I, Ember, cast you out! Ember then spi lit splits her dragon energy avatar into countless smaller variants, having them tackle Dr. Shemp and push him upwards, leading his spirit out of the realm of dreams. Mark my words! You ain't seen the last of me! As the dragon spirits all go up with Dr. Shemp, Ember's mother's spirit looks down to see her daughter. You've become all I hoped you'd be, and more. I only wish I could tell you about your father. Farewell. And I love you, my sparking ember. In a shining glimmer, the spirits push Shemp through a portal, casting Shemp out from the realm of dreams. Ember then looks up, a tear falling from her left eye as she smiles at the sky. Goodbye, Mama. As Spyro and friends are released from their bonds, they approach Ember. How did you do that? We're not really here. We're still asleep. Our spirits are separated from our bodies in this realm. And since dreams can manifest here, anything we think of can come true. Whoa. Mind blown, dude. Well explained, Ember. Just then, Spotlight and Blackout appear. Spotlight? Blackout? Now that Shemp has been cast out, I can wake everyone up. How can you do that? As the guardian of the dream realm's light, I'm also the reason for people being able to wake up from sleep at all. Yeah, without me, sleep wouldn't exist, period. Without my sister, everyone would be asleep forever. It's a lot of, very complicated. That's why uh, you coming here was very unnatural. You had to reject the realm of dreams before you could leave. Otherwise, you'd be stuck here forever. Why weren't... Weren't I, I, Flame, and Sparks tested, though? That's easy. You rejected the nightmare outright, so there was no need to test you. But you still had to keep rejecting it, which is why I couldn't help you. I even threw in the villain act for fun. Flame took heed of Ember's words after you found him, which is why he's to leave as well. As for the dragonfly, he knew outright. He was just having fun with it until you picked him up. Yeah, having a supermodel dragonfly as one of the ladies kind of gave it away. Spotlight and Blackout then combine their magic in order to create a portal back to the waking world. That's your ride. Better get out of here. But wait, if that was my memory from when I was an egg, then what was happening outside of it? You gotta know something. Sorry, if you don't have the memory, I'm not allowed to tell. I don't make the rules, Spyro. I just enforce them. Oh, man. Well, at least we found some answers. Let's go, guys. As Spyro and friends walk away, Spotlight and Blackout look upon them with expressions of proudness. You sure we shouldn't tell them why you really put him in that memory? Nah, he just needed the hint. Loopholes, am I right? Gotta do what we can to make sure he's on the right track and that the balance is kept. Fair enough. 
It's funny how time flies for us. To think, it's already been ten generations. Back in the waking world, all the dragons, including Dr. Shemp, wake up. Ah, five more minutes, Mama! Huh? As Dr. Shemp looks up, he notices big dragon guards looking down at him. Uh, well... <laughs> gotta go! Swiftly, Dr. Shemp throws down a glass bottle with purple liquid, creating a puff of smoke that allows Dr. Shemp to escape. Meanwhile, at Ember's house, Spyro and friends finally wake up. So, I guess that happened. Yeah, a lot happened. Yeah. Ugh. I think we had too many s'mores. Ugh. Meanwhile, in the woodlands of Artisan Kingdom, Dr. Shemp is trying to return to the Nork Empire. Curse it all! I couldn't find one scale of that old lizard, her aster. <sighs> but it wasn't a total loss. To think. The bloodline of the spirit dragon lived on after all. Dr. Shemp looks on as he passes the spirit dragon statue. Oh, how I've got plans for her. <laughs> During that morning, Ember is on a hilltop looking out into the horizon of the grasslands outside of the Artisan Kingdom. Just then, Spyro flies down to meet up with Ember. Hey, Ember. Hey, Spyro. Spyro then sits down next to Ember. So, your granny tell you anything? Just that we're a special type of fire dragon, with special flames that affect the spirit world. But I don't know what that means. Think your granny's hiding something? I always knew my family had secrets, but I just didn't think I'd be carrying so much of them. It's funny. I used to just feel safer when I wore my pendant. Now it just feels like another piece of jewelry on my neck. But it turned out to be so much more. Yeah, I can't believe it. That it's a spirit gem. Although it doesn't give me the same feeling like the one in the vault did. How about you? Well, I don't feel like breaking it. Maybe spirit gems all work differently. This one is pink, while the one you broke is blue. By the way, do you remember when we met? I gotta say, I don't remember much about when we were little. Only then that that's when we met. Oh, I see. Although, I get this faint feeling that I did something... Important. As Spyro says this, Ember's eyes widen as she just stares at him. Spyro? Ember then has a flashback of when Spyro confronted the bullies. The leading red dragon hit its Spyro with a fireball. Back off, purple freak! Yeah, get in our way and we'll burn you to a crisp! As Spyro keeps getting hit with fireballs, Flame and Ember look on and worry. Just then, Ember is enraged and ultimately awakens her fire, shooting a powerful fireball at the three red dragon and bullies, bigger than any of them ever produce. Whoa! What the? Back off! You hurt, hurt him anymore, and I'll bring you to a crisp! Ah, she's a monster! Run away! As the trio of red dragons run runs away, Flame helps Spyro up. You okay, dude? Yeah, I'm good. Glad my skills are fireproof. And you! Ember blushes as Spyro notices her. You were incredible! That flame was cool! It wasn't as brave as you were. Of course it was! My name's Spyro, by the way. What's your name? Back in the present, Ember continues staring at Spyro. Yeah, Ember? Ember then smiles as she looks at Spyro. Thank you. Huh? For what? Within Ember's mind as she looks at Spyro, she imagines him as that, that brave little dragon that saved her those few years ago. Just as she imagines herself as the little dragon he saved. For just... accepting me. Back in reality, Spyro shrugs it off and just continues looking into the horizon with Ember. 
Whoa. Who are you? What have you done with, with Ember? <laughs> In a sneaky move, Ember kisses Spyro's left cheek, much to his nervous surprise. As Spyro blushes, Ember leans her head onto Spyro, his left shoulder, and she closes her eyes. I'm just Ember. And that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, it is. The two continue looking on at the sunny horizon of the grasslands as they share their very first romantic moment together. Meanwhile in the treasury vault, Aster holds the remaining shards of the broken spirit gem that Spyro shattered. It's lucky you fell asleep in the vault, otherwise Shemp would have discovered where you hid the shard. It seems what I feared has come to pass. When I was in the realm of dreams, I had no mere nightmare, but what felt like a premonition about him. Spyro? No. Him. Perhaps it's time we told him. No. Spyro is safer never knowing the truth. Just then, a fairy enters the vault in a, in a rush and panic. Elder Aster! Lady Zoe, you've left the ruins after a myriad of years. I wouldn't have left if it wasn't important. One of the crystals on the ancient portal have sparked. Someone's activated it from another realm. So our fears have been realized. Thomas, gather the other five dragon lords for a, for a meeting. I shall gather the dragon elders. Of course, but why? We must act with haste before history repeats itself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to check out our merch store, buy me a coffee page, and Amazon affiliate link linked in the description and pinned comment below. So you can help us expand the channel and give you guys higher quality content. Also, if you want to check out our original content, be sure to check out the playlists linked in the description below. With all that said and done, JT Anime, and I'll check you guys later.